Hi everyone, thanks for tuning into our video series on the select statement. In the last video, we went over the acume clause and how it flows within the select statement. In this video, we'll be talking about the post acume, which operates pretty similarly to the acume clause. The post acume always comes after the acume clause, but the post acume operates independently from acume, meaning that you are not required to use the acume just to use post acume. Logic defined in the post acume clause executes on all mentioned vertices in parallel, allowing it only to access the vertices within a traversal instance. Once a local accumulator has been updated, the new value can immediately be viewed in the post acume, but global accumulators cannot be viewed in the post acume until after the add data aggregation is done. This is because we're not using multiple values to update one accumulator, so each update can be done without any conflicts, so we don't have to wait for data aggregation. In this query example, we're going to be finding the normalized value of the number of common friends with the input user. A normalized value is the value of each number divided by the maximum value of all numbers. We'll be accepting an input vertex of type user, and we'll use a max acume for the global accumulator, and a sum acume for the two local accumulators. The local sum acume cnum will be the number of common friends on each vertex, and the local sum acume normalized cnum will store the normalized value of common friends on each vertex. The global max acume max cnum will be used to store the highest value of common friends from all the vertices. We start from the input user and find all their friends in friends one hop. Then we find all the friends of the input user's friends and store it in friends two hop. Then in the acume clause in line nine, we increment the target vertice sum acume by one. This is used to count the number of people that they are connected to within our first hop vertices. The data is collected to the accumulator buckets, then the data is aggregated and stored in the accumulator. The stored values are three, two, and one, because user E has one, two, three friends in common with the first input user, user F has two friends, and user G has one friend in common. Now, in the post acume on line 10, we pass in each of the target vertices sum acume values to the max cnum global accumulator. Just like in the acume clause, the same aggregation step happens after the data is collected. The final value, which is 3, is the highest value of the numbers being passed in and is stored to the global accumulator max cnum. Next, on line 11, we select S, which is all the source vertices from our friends to hop vertex set. Then on line 13, we use the sum acume cnum from our last select statement and divide it with the global accumulator to get the normalized number of common friends for each target vertex. The values are stored in each vertex's norm cnum accumulator and they can be immediately accessed after updating. Here's what we covered in these slides. Each vertex satisfying the from and where clauses performs a block of statements in the post acume clause. The statements within a block are executed in order, but each block execution may be in parallel with other block executions. Each post acume statement may access either the starting or target vertices. And global accumulator updates are queued but do not take effect until exiting the post acume clause. So accumulator values that are seen during the post acume are those that existed when the preceding acume block existed. Thank you for watching our post acume video. Our next video's topic will be on the having, order by, and limit clauses. Thank you for watching.